If you want to make a lot of money, sometimes you just have to do some unpleasant things. In fact, there's even an American television show called Dirty Jobs that ran for eight seasons. That's how curious we are to know about the tough stuff you good folks do to make a living. But we must remember, no matter how dirty or dangerous or even deadly a job is, somebody's got to do it. And it's for that reason alone they deserve to make some serious cash, plus benefits. Here are 15 horrific jobs that must pay big bucks. Rough day at the office. So this first job clearly requires being able to go into a small dark place and remain calm while doing so. There's another language spoken in this clip, so we're not exactly sure what they're saying, but the equipment doesn't seem so modern. So this seems like an older method that seems dangerous. It appears they might be potholing to search for the underground utility which refers to the vast infrastructure of pipes and cables that transport water, gas, and electricity to each building in the area. When the hole is deep enough, people will be able to visually confirm the location of any of these lines, but this method looks very outdated. This man is just getting put down the hole head first, very far and very deep, and it doesn't look so safe. We're hoping this is just some sort of joke or prank. The man does at least have a headlamp on, so maybe he's volunteering to do a spooky task. Or he lost a short straw. The most freaky part is we don't know how deep that goes. What if the rope holding his feet broke? How much money would it take for you to do such a horrific job? Let us know in the comments. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Being a sewer inspector must be one of the worst jobs ever. Not even the best day would this be a job most people could ever consider a profession. So first off, cheers to those brave individuals who do all the hard sewer inspecting. We appreciate it, but you'd be amazed at how complex this kind of work can be. You're not just wandering through a labyrinth of huge pipes and dodging vermin. You need to be able to inspect, test, sort, sample or weigh non-agricultural raw materials, processed, machined, fabricated, stuff too. Plus, you need to understand and test assembled parts of products for defects, wears, and deviations from specifications, using complicated measuring instruments and complex test equipment. And with no visibility in some of the poopy pools, most of this work is done by feel. And for these fellas playing in the sewer, is it just us? Or does this situation look a little DIY? Perhaps these board short wearing guys lost something down this manhole and decided to inspect the sewer themselves. What do you think? Could you do it? Use the hashtag sweet topic in your comments below and let the world know. Deep Sea Welder Learning to weld normally isn't easy and when you add an underwater scenario to that with all this equipment while making sure to make as few mistakes as possible makes this one stressful job. Since this is obviously a dangerous career, the job offers attractive salaries. However, despite the dangers, many take on this opportunity. Some of the risky elements of this include electric shock, decompression sickness, known as the bends, and of course, drowning is always a possibility. The temperature under the water can get very cold, which conducts heat away from the body. If the diver remains in the cold water too long, this can potentially cause organ failure. That's why it's important to have a rubber wetsuit built for protection against extreme temperatures. To become an underwater welder, you must first complete training for both welding in this specific condition and diving. Welders learn about all the safety protocols during this training and take it very seriously. They all know this is no easy task, but even with how scary it may sound, only one person has ever passed away from doing this professionally. Underwater welders never dive alone so you wouldn't have to worry about being down there by yourself. Many people in this field just consider it underwater construction, plain and simple, but with just a few extra safety rules and requiring someone in good shape. 2,000 feet commute. If your hands don't sweat while watching this guy on the top of a 2,000 foot tower, you might consider becoming a surgeon. Not having any feeling watching this might be concerning because this task most people wouldn't even attempt for a million dollars is happening right here. Nick Wagner is the person who was paid to climb such a terrifying height to inspect the digital antenna as part of its annual checkup. He's not getting anywhere near a million for this and the one advantage he got was getting airlifted for the first 1900 feet. 
but climbing all of that would be impossible anyways. Or is it possible? Maybe someone can try that for a world record, but good luck. This tower belongs to the news station KDLT in Rowena, South Dakota, which is so high that the ground is obscured by clouds. It's one of the tallest structures in the world. Only two buildings are taller, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai and the Tokyo Skytree in Tokyo, Japan. Because of the risks with this kind of job, workers must have certain qualifications as a degree in electrical engineering and undergo special training. This job, however, is not as risky as it seems. The main thing to overcome is the fear of heights, which is impossible for most people. <laughs> Deadliest Catch When a job has a show about how dangerous it is, you know this must be one serious undertaking. It's the only profession where you can be swallowed whole. Fishing workers encounter a number of threats daily from stormy weather to aquatic creatures. These professionals pass away at a rate of 117 per 100,000 individuals on average, but those numbers have gone down in the past years. The deep sea fisher has led the list of the most dangerous jobs in the world, but after the most recent report, logging workers have taken the lead. So only one other career is scarier than this. A very alerting stat is that of every 100,000 people who fish, 103 of them will pass away while working. This is 50 times higher than other workers. The vast majority of these tragedies were from drowning. So, in general, the commercial fishing industry is not for the weak at heart. Each year, it places thousands of workers on the world's shorelines at the mercy of the ocean. Crab pots and crab pot launchers are common sources of injuries. Fishermen get caught up in the coil lines. Working at the edge of the boat also puts them at risk of being swept off the deck and falling overboard. With the environmental odds stacked against them, what keeps most people coming back to crab fishing? Many people say it's the worst job with the best pay, but that's only if you succeed. Some people cash out as much as $50,000 just after a few days of work. If you ever think of going into this career path, make sure you find an amazing mentor because not much can prepare you for this. Sky High Scaffolding With all the amount of massive skyscrapers being built, you'd think some people might be on top without any safety gear by accident but not on purpose, right? Well, this footage from Malaysia shows a construction worker balancing on scaffolding without safety ropes as he built an extremely tall skyscraper. There were many shocked Malaysians that are calling to name and shame the workers and the company they work for as this makes others look bad and for safety concerns. It might give the country a bad rep or at least the business they work for. In the insane video, the man builds scaffolding while being hundreds of feet in the air without any safety harness at all and his stunned co-workers gasp in disbelief. The clip begins by showing the top of the towers that stand at a whopping 1,483 feet, and these are called the Patronus Twins Towers. They're the tallest in the world, so falling would not end well. Inches away from peril, the workers who are wearing a hard hat and yellow shorts pick up scaffolding poles and puts them above his head to form a bridge. He then climbs up the tiny frame and walks on top of these poles to get to the next level of scaffolding, when he's standing on his makeshift pole, the worker then starts to work while looking as it's just another normal day. After this, another worker is shown wearing a bandana instead of a hard hat and is seen balancing on the scaffolding without any safety ropes. They can't be getting paid more for this, right? Why even bother with the risk? That just seems like it's some kind of brag. Extreme Tree Surgery Can someone call the doctor? And by doctor, we mean the tree surgeon. Well, this job doesn't exactly involve surgery, but it seems just as difficult or at least more life-threatening of a job. Tree care workers have one of the most dangerous jobs in America, regularly encountering heights, slippery conditions, falling limbs, sharp equipment, and much more. The amount of injuries increase after storms when unqualified storm chasers with chainsaws and landscaping companies offer their service to the uninformed homeowners. Annually, tree care injuries account for about 80 worker casualties and at least 23,000 chainsaw injuries are treated. Many of those injuries result from inadequate training and equipment. As we mentioned before, storms increase the dangers of this job because storms have heavy winds that cause major damage to trees. If a tree falls over or its branches cause damage to a house or power line, one of these folks is called in to make sure the situation is handled properly. Many things can go wrong being high up in a flimsy tree with a chainsaw. 
If you make too many mistakes, it could cause a disastrous situation. It's no wonder why this profession is always considered one of the most unsafe. You would think, with how many accidents occur in this profession, they'd get a bit more cash for their courage. <coughs> skydiving Firefighters Being a skydiving firefighter is a very rare opportunity, as there are only 270 of them on active duty. You have to be an exceptional firefighter and skydiver to take this job on. They're basically the special forces of the fire service. The smoke jumpers only accept the best. Candidates must be amazing wildland firefighters and be in top physical condition and meet the height and weight requirements as you might expect. There are psychological tests to determine mental stability as well. We can't have these folks losing their cool in the field, no pun intended. A jumper has about five minutes to suit up in all of their gear when the air horn calls for them. As their job calls for them to be self-sufficient and isolated, they drop with 48 hours worth of food and water and supplies. They know how to survive in the wilderness and save nature from fire. They've been around since the 1940s and equipment has gotten better since then, but it's still a very dangerous job. First, the risk of skydiving on top of surviving a forest fire sounds pretty impressive. The smoke jumpers always have a spotter on board the plane which circles above, relaying vital information and of course being able to communicate to other humans doing this definitely will help boost morale. <coughs> Venom Farmer If you're afraid of snakes, this next job is not for you. Even if you love snakes, this is still a dangerous job. Jim Harrison is around snakes most of the day. Not just any harmless snake, venomous ones of course. Did we mention he has to extract the venom with his bare hands? Sounds like something from a horror film, but this is needed so antibodies can be made. So one person risks their life getting as much of this liquid gold as possible. Jim must be very brave or very crazy. It's hard to tell since not many people would attempt this even once. He's done this task more than a million times and has only been bitten eight, so that's a pretty good ratio if you ask me but with help always near, the risk is lowered. A lance-headed viper bit him once and it left him in the hospital for four weeks, needing three operations before he was finally okay. His hands are scarred with some fingertips missing, and after 600 to 1,000 extractions a week, this increases the odds of getting injuries. Luckily, that anti-venom is nearby. Can't imagine doing this before modern medicine. This profession is very important and helps research for future anti-venoms and saves many lives. So it's good we have people who are not afraid of snakes or getting bit. With over 5.4 million people getting bitten by a snake each year, it's important to have many people who can do such scary tasks. <laughs> Sherpa Mountaineers 11 people didn't make it trying to climb Mount Everest in 2019, so when casualties are still in double digits in recent years, this mountain is no joke to get to its summit. Overcrowding, bad weather, and a record number of permits being issued may all be contributing factors for these recent tragedies. Kami Rita Sherpa, a mountain guide who has the world record for summiting this beast of a mountain, thinks it's an increase in the number of less experienced climbers that are making the problem worse. He blames some tour companies for underestimating the risks to novice climbers. Sherpas are local people who are highly skilled and experienced climbers. They're paid to do things such as prepare the route for foreign climbers to follow, fix ropes in place, and carry the necessary climbing kit up the mountain. They know the mountain inside and out and have to rescue tourist climbers often, so their job is more dangerous than the climbers as they risk their lives to save others. A Sherpa can earn up to 4,800 euros during the climbing season, which is about 10 times the average wage in Nepal. They should probably get more, but it's a part of their life, and they're not bothered by this. For the Sherpa community, the mountain is not just a mass of rock, but a deity to be revered and cared for. They worship and have deep respect for the mountain, and they trust it will save them from whatever comes. Ice Truckers Ice road trucking can make a truck driver a lot of money, but that's to make up for all the hazards that come with the pay. Many truckers quit after their first trip, and stats show that there's a 70% turnover rate among ice road drivers. These truckers brave the ice roads to deliver anything from fuel to food. People working in gold mines in northern Alaska need fuel, food, and many other supplies and equipment. Since these gold mines are found in remote locations, the best and most effective way to deliver supplies is by truck. 
The short season, good pay, and limited job openings make this one of the most competitive trucking careers you can pursue. Only a small number of truckers that chase after ice road trucking jobs actually secure a job. So this is not only dangerous, but very hard to get hired for. In fact, it's understood that it's a pretty tight-knit community. So unless you know someone or have lots of experience, the ice road companies will toss your application aside. So with the dangers of the snowstorms and ice driving becomes more difficult, and if your truck were to break down, it could be a disaster. The routes are extremely isolated, and you cannot leave your truck idling if it were to break down. A temperature of negative 50 degrees Celsius is not uncommon, and a simple breakdown then turns into a life-threatening situation. <coughs> Crocodile Scientist Crocodiles have the strongest bite of any animal on Earth, able to exert over 2,000 kilos of force and clamp their jaws shut in just 50 milliseconds, six times faster than you can blink. That seems like a good intro about a job that involves being face to face with these impressively strong creatures. On top of this, crocodiles have some of the most sophisticated physiology in the animal kingdom, so studying them is not easier either. And that's exactly what a crocodile psychologist does. All of this for only $62,500 a year, you must really love crocodiles to commit to a profession this dangerous. A research team during the 1980s ventured into croc-infested waters in the middle of the night to catch crocs by shining a light in their eye and then looping a rope around them. The team let the crocodiles struggle to burn energy before towing the animals to shore. It's not for the faint-hearted to be around these ancient reptiles. Every once in a while, a crocodile decides to lunch on land. In one particular instance, a crocodile turned right around and headed toward their camp. No one was hurt, but this is one horrifying career path. No doubt about that. Minesweeper Landmines and unexplored devices can remain in the ground for decades after a conflict has ended. Every day, 15 people perish or are injured by these indiscriminate weapons. Almost half of the civilian casualties are children. Mine clearance is the process of removing landmines from an area. The goal of a humanitarian demining is to remove all of the landmines to a given depth and make the land safe for human use. This job would take nerves of steel. There are a variety of methods for detecting landmines that have been studied. These include electromagnetic methods, one of which is a ground-penetrating radar that's been employed in tandem with metal detectors. Personal protective equipment does not protect against all types of landmines, so this must be the most nerve-wracking job in the world, right? It does seem many people who have this job are from the communities that are close to the mines hidden from past or current conflicts. Hopefully, robots can take over this kind of profession as soon as possible. <coughs> mosquito Researcher Even if your job is to study mosquitoes, I wouldn't believe you telling me that you actually love them because no one in their right mind would ever love a mosquito. Well. Apparently, scientists often sacrifice their own skin to study how mosquitoes drink blood. They allow mosquitoes to bite them in laboratory settings so they can observe the insect's feeding behavior. With this being said, that means they must enjoy itching non-stop. This is a very bizarre part of studying insects that bite. They of course hope to find ways to prevent deadly diseases like malaria, which is transmitted by bites from mosquitoes carrying the malaria parasite. The main motivation for dealing with these bugs must be finding the solution to such a big problem. Recently, a United Kingdom scientist said a gene drive study rendering female insects infertile may lead to self-destruct mosquito field tests within 10 years, so maybe this work is paying off. Let's just hope no one working with them contracted any diseases. <laughs> Volcano Diver Explorer and filmmaker Sam Kosman recently documented his descent into Marum Crater, one of the world's most active volcanoes. It's a place so difficult to get to that fewer people have visited it than the surface of the moon. His goal was to capture rare footage of this spectacular place, and of course, when dealing with volcanoes, you have to be very cautious. Kosman said the experience was terrifying, but all fear disappeared from a large amount of adrenaline when hanging above the site of a glowing, burning fire pit. Everyone is very encouraging towards Kosman for his passion, even though volcano diving is a profession that requires putting your life at risk. <laughs> Hippodentist 
This is another animal job that you hope never goes wrong because hippos are one of the most dangerous animals in all of Africa. They're estimated to slay around 3,000 people a year. One of the worst cases of hippos ambushing humans was in 2014 when a hippopotamus overturned a boat and 12 children and an adult perished. These animals may look cute when chomping watermelons or getting their teeth brushed, but they can stand their ground to almost anything on the planet. This unique job of cleaning hippo teeth is one that may have some risk, but the hippos are captive ones, so they've been trained to know what's going on. The careful zookeeper is a hippo toothbrushing professional. They have to be aware that the hippo's gnashers could prove to be very painful if they accidentally clamp down on them, and it takes a fair degree of caution as they brush the animal's teeth. If the hippos ever lash out, this could be a horrifying job. The pay for this might not be worth it. What animal would you want to brush the teeth of? Let us know in the comments. All of these professions are extremely dangerous and take tons of practice to master and these professionals are ready for any life-threatening situations thrown at them. What job blew your mind the most? You can let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.